Hey guys, Jim here and welcome to Budget RC. This is our last upgrade video on the 10428B upgrade series. So today we're spending all the monies. We're going to upgrade the electronics, so stick around. Okay guys, so like I said in the intro, this is going to be the last upgrade video in this series. This is going to be it. I will have an additional follow-up video where I summarize all of the upgrades we've done, give you a little bit of background, as well as give you my, my thoughts and feelings about what the vehicle is and how it turned out, and we'll do some running footage as well so you can see how it performs with the new setup. But first we need to get finished. The one thing that we've avoided so far in this entire upgrade has been the electronics. We've been running with the stock electronics and so far they've been pretty good. The servo was really weak and that was really I think the biggest problem with the stock electronics. But because it's a five wire servo you need to either really invest some time into, into modifying a three wire servo to work or just upgrade the electronics. That's where I decided to take this. Today I'll go through all of the new electronics that I've chosen and give you guys some background as to why I chose what I did. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, so as you can see guys, I've already installed the majority of the electronics. Most of this is a pretty straightforward install and you don't really need me to step you through it. A couple of things that you do want to consider when you're doing this is that when, when you pick a servo, you're going to want to make sure that you've got something that fits. This servo is exactly the same size as the servo that came out. So even if you were to use this servo as a starting point for a three wire to five wire modification, it'll fit in here with the factory speed control. Since we're replacing the speed control as well, the depth of the servo isn't real important, but you don't want one that's too deep just because some speed controls are larger than others. Additionally, you want to make sure that the space in the front of the servo from the mounting point to the output shaft of the servo isn't any larger than the original because it'll push this mounting horn too far forward. This one I think is just a little bit longer than the original and I kind of got lucky that this is sitting super close to my mount but it's not interfering so I kind of lucked out there. What I went with for a servo is the JX6221 servo. I've got the link below you can follow it for the specs. It's a relatively quick servo, it's a relatively powerful servo. Nothing like the servo that I put into the Gen 7, but I think for the money, it should be a pretty good servo. It was only about 12 bucks for the servo, it's kind of hard to beat. It's all metal gears and it's got good torque. And rather than running an external BEC, I wanted to try it running directly from the speed control's BEC. This speed control puts out about five and a half volts and other than being a little on the slow side, I'm pretty happy with the overall performance. This has gotten enough torque to turn these tires, and as a matter of fact, before I set the endpoints, it would start to tweak the whole chassis when it turned too far. So there's more than enough torque out of this servo for what this vehicle needs, even when you drive it right from the ESC. Now moving to the ESC, what I went with is the Hobbywing X-Car brushed ESC. This thing is super cheap. It's only about 10 or $11. Again, link below. And it's got a crawler mode or a normal mode. We're in the crawler mode so that we get the good drag brake and the instant reverse. And this speed control is actually something I used in my son's circuit back when that was brushed. So I already had this thing laying around. And I decided to reuse it because I knew it worked well in his car and I knew it was cheap. For a few bucks more, you can get into a Hobbywing ESC like the WP1040 or 1060. Those are pretty good options. They're probably a little bit better option than this. But if you're on a tight budget, this thing's hard to beat. So next you can see my receiver here. And this is a FlySky receiver that goes with the FlySky radio. Now, I have to admit that I cheated a little bit with regards to the radio. To be able to stick within the budget that's allowed, that I set myself to being a $250 total all-in price, you need to go with the GT3B controller. This is the GT3C. So this one costs about $15 more and in that regard it kind of blew the budget. Functionally this is the same as the GT3B. So if I had gone with the GT3B I would have been able to stick to my budget. I went with this one just because this one has the rechargeable battery and to me that's just a whole lot more convenient than jamming double A's in all the time. This one charges right from a USB plug. It's super simple and straightforward. 
I've got the GT2 version with the rechargeable battery in one of my son's cars and it's just a whole lot more convenient. Especially if you're out bashing somewhere and you realize you've got a dead battery, you can plug it into the USB port in your car for a few minutes and you're good to go. But ultimately, whatever radio you choose, if you want to keep this a two-speed, you need to have a three-channel radio. That's why I was looking at the GT3B or 3C series of radios. They have three channels and you can set the endpoints for that third channel and that's super important. You need to be able to adjust endpoints so you can set that shift servo so that it doesn't go too far. So speaking of the shift servo, you might be able to see that right now there's no servo here. That's because this part of the installation I did want to take you through because there are a couple steps that you want to make sure that you're aware of. But first we'll get to the electronics. So for the steering servo I decided to go with the MG996R. This is a metal geared servo but it's extremely inexpensive. It's only about a five or six dollar servo and at that price considering that all we're doing is shifting the transmission this was really a no-brainer. So as you can see this is a full-size servo. The problem here is that a micro servo is a whole lot smaller than the servo that originally came here to do the shifting and the size of the servo that that came with is kind of a rare size and the only options I could find were like in the fifteen to twenty dollar range. If you want plug and play that's the way to go. Spend your fifteen or twenty bucks and, and, and you're all done. I wanted to try to do this as cheap as I can because I'm cheap. So I went with this five dollar full size servo and then had to come up with a way to mount it. But while I was looking for this servo on eBay, what I managed to find was this nifty little aluminum servo mount which was only a couple of bucks. And I thought for that kind of money this will be a great option, especially because I know a lot of the folks that are following this don't have 3D print capabilities. So I ordered this the same time I ordered the servo with the intention of seeing how I could get it to integrate. What I discovered is that I could actually utilize the existing holes from the original servo mount because they aligned with a couple of the mounting holes right in the bottom of this. The only caveat was that the entire mount was a little bit too wide so that the holes wouldn't line up. So what I had to do, you can see the shiny spot here, what I had to do was to grind this down and I took down I would say between a sixteenth of an inch and an eighth of an inch. And what that allowed it to do was to line up the holes perfectly so I could just use the existing holes. Now I also ground this side down just to give me a little bit more room for the batteries. And when you grind this down because your battery is going to be up against this or could be up against this you're going to want to make sure that you file this nice and smooth so that there's no burrs or sharp edges that could puncture or wear out your battery. So once you've got that all filed down, now it's just a simple matter of installing your screws. So you're going to want to use a couple of these 6 millimeter screws to attach this plate. The screws that the factory mounting hardware use are a little bit too long and if you try to thread them into these holes, ultimately you'll end up stripping the heads off of them. These shorter screws just seem to wind up working a lot better. Another thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you take the, uh, the servo arm off of the original servo. As long as you use a 25 tooth servo, this will mount right onto the new servo. Go ahead and snap this ball cup on. Now to install the servo you can use the original mounting screws, slide them in from the back and then slip a lock nut over the front. Now you can just use some hardware and tighten them up. I'm only using two screws. You can use all, but two is perfectly adequate to hold. All right, so one last thing. When I install my battery, I've just got a little piece of foam that I use here just to make sure that we don't have any issues between the battery and that mount. Now, the only thing I have left to do is to mount this switch. This switch is a tiny little piece of junk instead of something more substantial, so I can't just tape it down. What I think I'm going to end up doing here is to just notch the top of this plate right here so that this can slide right in. But for now I've just got it hanging out. So one thing I wanted to just point out to you guys is setting your endpoints on channel 3. Now it doesn't take a lot of throw on this. On channel 3 my endpoints are only set to about 5%. When I push the button you can see right now we're in first gear, there's second gear, and there's first gear. It doesn't take a lot of throw. And you can, I don't know if you can hear or not, but there's no buzzing from the servo. Everything's pretty happy. All right, guys, so that's the installation of the new electronics. You can see that we stuck with the factory brushed motor, but all of the rest of the electronics have been changed. Now, this was a big spend week, as I had mentioned. This radio is 45, but as far as the budget's concerned, if you stick with the GT3B, that's $30. 
The steering servo is another $12 or $13. That speed control is about $11 or $12. And the shift servo is about five bucks plus a couple bucks for the mount. I'll have all the information and the exact totals below, but ultimately we spent just about 60 bucks this week. We've been saving money over the last few weeks where we haven't spent a lot, so we've had that money kind of bankrolled. And our total cost did come in just under the $250 limit that I had set. Now I did want to do a couple other things. I really wanted to try adding a sway bar, and I also wanted to add an LED light bar. But because of the budgetary concerns, to stick within that $250 window for the sake of this project, that just wasn't possible. I am going to put the light bar on. I may put a sway bar on. I want to drive it a little bit first and see how bad I really need it. I didn't run into a real bad torque twist situation in most of my initial running, so I may be okay without it. The light bar, I've already got a 3D printed design worked up to mount right here. I will have a follow-up video for that. In that video, I'll also be connecting the original lights back into this system as well. Right now, I don't have those installed because this is a setup for a three channel operation and I'm using that third channel for the shift servo. I did buy a six channel receiver that I'm going to swap in here and I'm going to go through the hack procedure that they have for these radios so that I can get up to eight channels. That'll give me the channels I need to be able to control the light bar and to be able to control these lights. So guys, even though that's not part of this upgrade series, keep an eye open for that video. Additionally, I will have a running video that I shot the footage for already. Hopefully I'll have that up within a few days of you seeing this video. And also, like I said, I will have one more wrap up video for this series where I summarize the changes I've made. I'll go through the total tally of cost with the links to all of the parts. And I'll have some running footage to show you guys how it, how it works. Like I said, I did have this out already and I was really impressed with how much better this vehicle worked than the first time out. Between the tires, the weight up front, and the better steering and suspension from that new bulkhead, this was a night and day difference on this vehicle and I couldn't be happier with how it worked out. So even though this series is over guys, make sure you stick around for those last couple videos. I think those will be great videos as well. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video series. I'm really impressed with what I was able to do for under $250. So make sure you guys stick around. I think it's going to be a fun summer. I've got a lot more stuff planned as well. So thanks guys.